The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Now we're ready to look at two-dimensional Fraunhofer diffraction patterns. The setup is the same as before, and just let me remind you of it. Here is the helium neon laser. Here's the beam from the laser. Gets reflected by this mirror, then gets reflected by this mirror into this lens. Then the output of the lens falls on this two-dimensional aperture, and then the diffracted light from this aperture then goes onto, onto the screen. Now let's look at this two-dimensional aperture here. It's made of two pairs of slits, a fixed one and an adjustable one. And the adjustable one is behind uh, the fixed one. I'm not going to tell you the spacing because I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you uh, to find out later. So what I can do with the, with the adjustable one, I can adjust the slit width by just moving this uh, translation stage. Okay, so now we're ready to look at the two-dimensional Fraunhofer diffraction pattern on the screen. So now if we bring in the, the, the pattern on the screen, we can see, this is before I do any adjustment, we can see now it's different from what we had before. It's in two dimensions. And also, what I'd like to bring to your attention is the cross terms cross terms over here and over here. I hope uh, you can see it well because they're very weak, but they're very important to the two-dimensional diffraction pattern. As you can see, the diffraction pattern looks like uh, the two-dimensional Fourier transform of the uh, field at the, uh, at the, at the uh, rectangular aperture. The, what I'm going to do now is vary the separation of of one of the slits. That's the one uh, behind. As you can see, the pattern changes. Now, if we pull back with the camera, if we pull back to, OK, that's enough, fine. Then you can see that I can change the, the spots, the size of the spots uh, on the screen. Now, in order for you to calculate that we were seeing what we're supposed to be seeing, and also to get a feel of what the slit widths are, I'm going to now put in a scale over here. And the scale here, uh, the markers, uh, represent two, a two centimeter spacing. Now, the separation between the, the aperture and the screen is uh, a meter. And the wavelength of the laser is 6328 angstroms. So now you should be able to calculate the size of the uh, rectangular aperture just from the information uh, uh, I've given you. And here again, let me do some adjustments so you can calculate it here. And then you can calculate the change in the slit width when I go to this position. Now you can see the high order ones. Also, I'd like you to notice the, the intensity variations. It's not that easy to see on video because the central spot is so, uh, is so bright. But at least you can see that, indeed, there are lots of spots available. And I hope you can calculate it uh, with ease. Now that we've looked at the two-dimensional Fraunhofer diffraction pattern of a rectangular aperture, we're now going to look at the circular aperture. We're going to look at the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern associated with various sizes of, uh, of circular apertures. So when we come back, we'll have that ready for you and then see what those look like.